What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about 13 things that you're doing that are destroying your diesel trucks. Now, a lot of these things people overlook, so this is a great video if you want to try to save money long term. Watch this video and try to apply this to your own life and your own vehicle, and it should help you out. I want everyone to see this video just because I truly believe it can save people money long term. If you keep on top of your truck and your maintenance and all that stuff, you will save money. So please, all I ask is you guys give this video a like, just because then it's going to put, YouTube's gonna push it to more people, and then in turn more people will see it and be able to save money on their vehicle. Let's just get right into it to it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is keeping your truck clean. As you see, my truck is behind me right here and you see in my videos, it's usually always clean and especially here in Saskatchewan, Canada, we get a lot of road salt in the winters. So if you let, you know, mud and salt and that kind of crap sit on your vehicle, it's going to rust a lot faster than if you keep it clean. So I know sometimes it's a pain in the ass in springtime when it's always dirty, but just try to keep your truck clean and uh, you know, it will just be an overall good condition for a longer period of time. All right, the second thing I wanna talk about is your fuel filter. Now, I know a lot of people neglect changing their fuel filter, but it is probably one of the most important things you can do to keep the cost down on owning a diesel truck. Yeah, fuel filters are expensive, but it's much more expensive to have to replace injectors or uh, injection pump. So make sure you keep up with your oil or with your fuel filters. I suggest changing them every oil change, about every 10,000 kilometers. I know sometimes that's a little bit much. You can maybe get away with every 20,000 kilometers, but also if you have a new truck that tells you kind of what your fuel filter life is, go by that, but just do not go any longer than what it says because sometimes those computers, you know, will prolong your fuel filter life more than they should. But basically just keep up with your fuel filter changes. All right, the third thing I want to talk about is your air filter. This is also gets neglected quite often. I see it all the time where trucks come in um, and their air filter is just completely caked up. They're complaining about smoke. They're complaining about poor fuel economy. Check your air filter. Also, if your truck's not getting, if your engine's not getting enough air, uh, a lot of times your turbo will overspeed just to try to spin faster to suck more air or push that air into the engine to give it what it wants. So uh, air filters are a very cheap way of keeping your engine running good because they don't cost much. So make sure you're either changing, like replacing your air filter, or if you have an aftermarket intake and you've got a cleanable air filter, Make sure you're checking it and cleaning it regularly because it's extremely important. Fourth thing I want to talk about is regular oil changes. A lot of guys will go along without oil changes, but you need to do them. I suggest every 10,000 kilometers, no more than that. And I suggest running synthetic oil. Um, you guys probably already know this one, so I'm not going to go on, on it much, but just oil changes are extremely important. Fifth thing I want to talk about is checking your oil levels, checking your coolant levels, and checking even, you know, your, the tire pressure in your air. What the hell is even that? Along with that, I'll say grease your front end of your truck and your U-joints, all that kind of stuff. Just your regular preventative maintenance. Um, you want to make sure that you're greasing your front end because then you're not going to wear out ball joints. You want to make sure you got enough air in your tires uh, just because uh, they'll last longer with the proper PSI in them. Also, tires fail if they have really low or really high PSI. They can um, wear out a lot faster and uh, they can ultimately just, I've seen them come right off a wheel before because they were underinflated. Underinflation is the number one issue for tire problems, just so you guys know. It's not overinflation, it's underinflation. But uh, yeah, check your diffs. You gotta make sure that you have enough oil in your diffs or else you know you don't wanna have to replace your front diff or your rear diff. Um, power steering fluid, all that stuff. Make sure that I'd say at least once a month you're checking all the fluids on your truck and you're giving your front end and your U-joints a good grease. It will save you money in the long term, trust me. Sixth thing I want to talk about is let your truck warm up, uh, especially in the winter and even in the summer. Uh, if, if it's, you know, plus whatever outside, it's the summertime, you hop in your truck, still let it run for 30 seconds before you drive it. You want your bearings and your turbo to get nice and lubricated. You want, you know, some heat to be in your cylinders, all that stuff. And in the winter time, especially, you know, plug your truck in at night and let it warm up for a decent amount of time in the morning. You don't want to drive your, your truck when the engine's really cold. That's just a good way to wear out stuff prematurely. 
All right, number seven goes with number six. It's kind of the opposite. So number six was let your engine warm up. Number seven is let your engine cool down. Now my friends are really bad for this and most people are bad for this, but you know, their truck will be totally up temperature and they'll get to the des destination, throw her in park and just shut the keys off and get out. And that's really hard on your exhaust manifold and your turbo, stuff like that. Stuff like that is really hot because all that gas is coming out of your truck's engine and it's going to, it, it heats up the metal. And then when you just shut off your truck, it's gonna go from really hot to cold very quickly. And that can crack your exhaust manifold, it can damage your turbo. So what you should be doing is you should be putting your truck in park and let it idle for about 30 seconds to a minute just so that the temperature can gradually come down and then you shut off the truck and then you won't have issues. So letting your truck cool down before you shut it off is also very important. All right, number eight, uh, bad, dirty, and old fuel. Uh, you wanna make sure you're getting your fuel from a good reputable fuel station. Some of these small town uh, fuel stations, they mean the best, but if they don't go through a lot of diesel, they could have old diesel in there or, you know, bad fuel filters on their diesel pumps, stuff like that. So you wanna make sure you're getting your, your diesel fuel from a reputable place. Also for you guys that work on the oil field and you probably take fuel from work, I know I'm guilty of that as well. Uh, if you're storing it in like 200 liter barrels, shelf life on diesel fuel is only six to 12 months, and that's best case scenario, uh, depending on um, storing conditions, temperature, stuff like that. So you don't wanna be putting in old fuel uh, that, that's not gonna combust good in your engine. It's just gonna be hard on your injectors, probably gonna you know, wear out some of your injectors, not gonna have nice spray patterns in your cylinders or on your pistons. So uh, I just would really encourage you to make sure that you're running you know, good fuel additives, you're putting nice clean fuel in your engine and you're putting fresh fuel in your engine, not stuff that's been sitting around for a long time. Number nine, I'm gonna talk about low fuel levels. So I know people that drive their truck until their fuel light comes on, then they go fill it up. Now, yeah, you can do that, but I really don't recommend it because you want your uh, lift pump, you want your injection pump and your injectors, all that. You want it to have lots of fuel all the time. You never wanna starve it out with anything. So I suggest, and me personally with my truck, quarter tank is my empty. So when I hit a quarter tank of fuel, that's when I go fill up. Um, you don't want to be uh, running anything lower than that, in my opinion, just because you can have issues if your truck doesn't have a really good pickup system. You can have issues where it sucks a little bit of air, could aerate your fuel a little bit. So most trucks should be okay, but it's just one of those things, it's just a good practice to have. When you get a quarter tank of fuel, just go fill up your truck. Don't be that lazy, just go do it. Number 10, I have high EGTs. Now, if you don't know, EGT stands for exhaust gas temperature. That is the temperature of the exhaust coming right out of your cylinders and uh, you know into your exhaust manifold and your turbo and stuff like that. So you want to, like a lot of guys will tune their truck, they'll be running these big tunes, they'll hook onto a skid steer, and they'll be towing a skid steer, and they're just like, yeah, this is sweet, I got tons of power. But they're not actually, they don't have any pyro to monitor their EGTs. Now, I really recommend you get one because you want to check your EGTs, and especially on like a Power Stroke or a Duramax that has aluminum heads, you know, you can melt your heads if you're running your engine too hot. You know, you can melt head gaskets, you can blow head gaskets, you can stretch head bolts, all that stuff. So EGTs are very important. You don't want them to exceed, you know, I try to say don't exceed 1200 degrees Fahrenheit for more than a couple seconds at a time, uh, depending on how well you've built your engine up. If you have a stock engine, I definitely don't suggest that. You can look up what people say for your current, or your actual truck, the one you own. But uh, yeah, just EGTs are a very good thing to monitor. You can usually get a little monitor with them with a pyro that goes in there. You can get like a, a pillar, like a circle pillar mount, something like that. Just to check what your exhaust gas temperatures are because they're very important and your truck doesn't have a factory temperature gauge for them. So they're a really good thing, especially if you're running an upgraded truck with tuning, you definitely wanna keep an eye on your EGTs so you're not wrecking your, your top end of your engine. Number 11 on my list is cheap parts. Now, I know people that are like, hey Kyle, can you price me out parts for my truck? And I give them a price, I give them a pretty good price, and they're like, oh, I found it cheaper on Rock Auto, or I found it cheaper on Amazon. It's like, yeah, okay, some things is okay, but if you're talking about like engine components, you know, uh, camshaft sensors, stuff like that, I really recommend going OEM or like a really, really good aftermarket brand. Buying these really cheap stuff off of Amazon and Rock Auto and stuff like that, 
I know I've done it before myself for certain things, but there are certain things that I won't buy off of uh, online. I want a really good trust, trustworthy brand and I'm going to spend the extra money to know that I'm getting a good product and you know, if you want your truck to last long, you get what you put into it. So you know, if you're gonna put in time, effort, and money into your truck, it's gonna last longer. If you're gonna cheap out with everything, then you know, don't come crying to me when your truck breaks down. The 12th thing I wanna talk about is when people ignore their truck's payload and towing capacities, and it happens literally all the time, uh, you know, people that have diesel trucks but they don't have, they don't drive semis, they think they drive a semi with their diesel truck and that's just always how it's going to be but newsflash, you're not driving a semi, you're driving just a normal pickup truck. So yeah, diesels are great for towing but they do have limitations and you need to stay within those limitations. Maybe you can kind of push the boundaries a little bit here and there but uh, constantly push boundaries which I know people that do, then they complain about transmission issues, then they complain about um, blown head gaskets, stuff like that. So you should really make sure that you're towing within your truck's capabilities and if you want to increase capabilities, well you can go about that in certain ways but it's going to cost you some money. So just keep that in mind, try to stay within your truck's uh, normal towing and payload capacities uh, and you'll, you know, truck will last a lot longer. Last but not least I want to talk about number 13 and that is letting stuff pile up on your vehicle. So you know you might have a little issue with your truck, you're like oh, I'll fix that later. That issue is going to stem into something bigger and then you're like well now I don't have the money to fix it and then that stems into something even bigger and now you just have a truck sitting in your backyard that you can't do anything with. So an example would be like a wheel seal. Um, Wheel seals are cheap and they're easy to change or you could get someone to do it for you. They're relatively cheap to, for labor on them. They don't take long. Uh, if you don't do it, you know, and you start kind of slacking off on checking your diff oil, you're going to lose all the oil in your diff and in your axle there and then you're going to have issues with your diff. So now your truck not only did it need a wheel seal, now your truck needs a diff which is like 10 times as expensive. So stuff like that, just keep up with it. Electrical issues, just stuff like that. Anything with your truck, keep up with the issues. As soon as something breaks, fix it ASAP and uh, stay on top of your maintenance, stay on top of your repairs and your truck, there's no reason why it shouldn't last, you know, 500,000 kilometers, a million kilometers, all that stuff. If you take care of it, it should last forever. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. I just wanted to go over things that I thought are commonly overlooked. These are just my opinions, so take it all with a grain of salt and you can do your own research. But if you enjoyed it, please like, please subscribe. It helps the channel out so much. Follow me on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. Shoot me a message if you got any issues. I try to reply to people, but have patience with me because I get tons of messages every day. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.